this is, of course, a reflection of how people have changed uh, in in general. You know, in in, in uh, on the on the timeline and the history of civilization, people have uh, perceived things around them, life and the universe in different ways. And it's a good thing uh, to study the history of civilization. We might talk about a little bit about later about the importance of, of history. And it is definitely uh, a shift that happened, several shifts that happened from at the beginning of magical instruction, you know, 1584 as may or, or around i mean in the 16th century in general were the first instructional texts to to nowadays well nowadays definitely uh, a person who learns is more visual there is we have um, lost a lot of our capacity to use our imagination the imaginary you know the the, the, the this part that, that uh, makes us and makes us perceive and understand uh, the things around us has, uh, uh, has changed a lot and has been replaced a lot by very quick and visual and accessible information through the internet. And that makes that a lot more information is available, but the imagination, the creativity that was required before to access and to in, in, instill uh, information, to make it into a skill, well, that has, uh, has, has been lost. So this is why magical instruction uh, has also changed. It's a big subject. It, it's, it's a big subject, and we could do a, a whole talk just about that, and it will be an interesting talk, I think. But uh, just these are just a few thoughts. Well, the classics of magic have a, a great gift they give to any person who studies them. And, and that is the gift of carrying in themselves the essence of magic. Now, the reason uh, why so many tricks are forgotten and some tricks are being remembered, well, is because, like the classics, they are linear, yeah. Uh, not necessarily the method, of course, but uh, in effect, you you can uh, tell a classic normally uh, in one or two sentences. A classic you can explain to someone else. You can say he had rings and he linked and unlinked them and he gave them to me and then I gave them back and there was not linked nothing. He made figures, or he had the card selected, it vanished and appeared in his in his wallet, you know, or he took four coins and one after the other passed through the table. Now people won't tell you, well, he made a, a, a deck appear and then he took it and he changed from red to black and he made the four aces the appear which changed into four queens. The back became blank and the message appeared on it, you know, things like that. Nobody can remember that. Of course, at the moment they can appreciate that and they can appreciate the novelty of it. And it's also necessary to have novelty because otherwise you could get stuck where you are. But by studying the classics, you get the gift of inherent, of the inherent magic that is clearly uh, within them. Uh, and uh, it, it helps you understand magic much better if you study the classics. Actually, it's not a question of choice. You know, some people think, well, you have to do this and you can't do that. It's not true. You, you, can, you can just study one, two, three, four classic. At the same time, you can do all the modern stuff. But by learning what you learn here, you learn here, you merge that and you get the personal, more profound understanding of what magic is. Well, that's that's a big question too. I could do the whole talk on that, but maybe we, we could uh, we could just um, we could just say uh, history is the the, the fa foundation on which all of magic is based, uh, or it, it explains it to us on how it is based. Uh, history and 
uh, Newton used to say, I can see further because I'm standing on the shoulders of giants. And this is what we're doing here. If we are taking an instrument, whether it's cards or coins or whatever, and we are performing uh, an effect, whatever it is, using techniques, or there they are. These are, did not drop like mana from, from heaven onto us. They came from somewhere. And the somewhere are some people, usually several people, who at some point have come up with this brilliant idea, initially maybe a very simple one, you know. Uh, and maybe uh, that the beginning, when somebody got a deck of cards, they realized, oh, when they, they, they are made by the card maker, they come in a specific order. Maybe it was new deck, we don't know that really. And if somebody takes a card, and I look at, at this card, I know automatically which one it is. You know, so at that point he was he, he was the inventor of the stack deck, you know, which has through the ages has of course been added uh, dozens, hundreds of, of subtleties, for shuffles, force cut, psychological principles, uh, management things, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So everything we touch, we do, we say comes from somewhere, from some someone, and usually through different cultures and different people. And I think it's a good thing for the appreciation of what we are doing to know a little bit about that, you know, and to know that we have a responsibility because we are being given a gift that now we give to our audience. And it's not just something we have invented. Yes, we have interpreted it. We had to put our time and our talent in it, but it was given to us by somebody. And we should respect those people who gave it to us by at least doing a credible performance. Now, for those who I, I just put here, this is a relatively simple, it's a very easy book to the illustrated history of magic by Milburn Christopher. So if you if you're not interested in history really and you don't want to go into, you know, here in the, in the background, you see all this thing is this is all about history. I have over 100 books just about the history of magic. And this is not counting like 300 books just about biographies, which is also a sort of a history, right? But just this one book will give you an insight. I promise that you will enjoy what you do more and you will gain in competence. And this is very important because your competence will help your to connect uh, with the audience, it will also help uh, the misdirection that you are much more convincing and when you look and you talk and you're more credible. And so it's an incredible, it's a butterfly effect. Uh, by studying history, the consequences are immense. Yeah, well, yes, uh, of course, I, I Again, I have a, a part of a whole talk is just about that. But mind mapping for those uh, who are not familiar with that, it's called also mind clustering. Uh, and it, it was, a, 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 it's a way to, to uh, do a, not just a brainstorm, it can be used as a brainstorm that is to, have to, to produce ideas, but it can also be used to create a finished product in a non-linear way because if you make you can make a list of course like a like a table of contents in a book so you have a, you have a list that's one way of organizing your thoughts uh, and of course with a computer you can go and and add things in between which is nice you couldn't do that by by hand but here i have a few mind maps which i use this what's the mind map this one is okay this was a, a short version of a very of a, of a, a one-day masterclass, I, I think I gave this in an hour and a half, but the five operational principle of card magic, which is like, you know, it looks like this. I don't know if you can see that here, uh, a little bit like that. So you you, you have the, the, the main subject, four shuffles. Then here I have just two uh, sub uh, topics, the techniques and the effects. And then I list two effects and four techniques and the same thing for, for the controls, for the forces, for the 
a fourth shuffle then for the, the top change, the five big uh, things. Then here is a, this is just one. You, I've been using this later. It's called, uh, let me see how this is called here. My computer is called Simple Mind. There, there's, uh, there are many. I don't need to need to, to buy. Uh, there is even a free, free version, Simple Mind. You can do this on uh, on your computer. This one is, of course, is make you laugh, I hope. <laughs> this is the mic, Look, looks like a big mess. I can't, don't know if you can call that. Uh, this, this looks like a big mess. This is my mind map for Kant College volumes three and four. Now, really, it took me about one year. And I, I had this on, on a big, uh, on a big, uh, you say, a flip chart, big flip chart. And I remember every day, I, I had an idea and I add a chapter and each chapter has tricks and it has techniques. And, and then I, I add a, a, the, the theory chapter, of course, in volume two, which has seven big essays. Each time I come up with a, a topic that I should you know, write about. Uh, I don't, uh, so you, a, a mind map allows you to do what Michelangelo said when he was asked how he makes sculptures. You know, he said, I look at the block of marble I see the statue, and now I only have to chip away what is too much, and I get the statue which is inside. <laughs> that, that was my card college. You know, I created card college in about one year here, uh, and then I said, now it's done. I only have to write it. That took me another year or so. You know, so yeah, that's a few thoughts about uh, thing. It's a it's a big topic, but it's a, it's a very interesting one, and I speak about it in several of my. Uh, publications, let me think, there is something in the agenda, secret and hidden agenda about it. There is also, uh, yeah, in, in my, on my lecture, I do, uh, there's even a, a genie special. I think 2004, there was a genie special and I have a whole essay there. And uh, there is a, a lecture which you can find on my web shop, which is, the, my, my first lecture at the Mark Leverage Symposium. It was a two hour lecture and, and you can, down, this is a, a, it's not very expensive. And you, you can go to my web shop, which is this one, robertojobby.com. And there's a lot also free stuff you can download there. A lot of essays I have, uh, you know, maybe we talk about uh, note taking afterwards and there is a, a lot of material we can hopefully use. Yeah, so that's mind maps, part of it. <laughs> well, again, this is this is a, a whole lecture. It's a it's a, a, a three hour lecture, and I won't be giving it here. Uh, now, here again, if you if you go to the to my web shop and you go to the newsletters six and nine, I have uh, I have written fairly extensively about it, you know. I start, I mean, I, I, I try to give you an idea just in two minutes now. Uh, I started with, uh, I always walk around with a small small notebook like this. And this is a very small one, because if, if I have a, in summer, when I, when, when I, you don't have anything with you, you no know, jacket, whatever, you can always put that in a, a small pencil, so I can always write things down. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm a great note taker, I like that. But you can nowadays you can also use uh, of course your your phone. There's a I use a lot of here's a it's an app. Uh, what is that? Oh, here it's called Four Memo. Four Memo. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's a big thing, and you can just hit that, which is so big that you can use it even in your car. You know because you 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 don't you don't want to handle things in your car. It's very dangerous. But this you can. You have it there just hit the thing and you can speak and you just hit it there and you can send it directly to your notebook wherever you want so i use that a lot when i go for walks and uh yeah and another app which is very good it's a, any scan app so you you can scan things you know when you see or you can make a little movie or something and you can send that all i uh, use that a lot now for the past years evernote but any other note taking electronic app is good and of course, you can send that information there. Now, what happens there is, of course, another story. Again, this is a big thing. For years, uh, you know, I, I kept notebooks like, like this. These are written 
I, I like papers. So this is a very, very nice handmade uh, notebook I got in Florence. As you don't know if you can see them, there are nice uh, uh, tarot cards. So I'm I go in, in Paris and London and Florence whenever I, I had the privilege of uh, my work would take me. You know, as a, as a performing magician, it's so wonderful. And I always take one or two extra days. You know, that was a, a part and still is. If I get booked in a whatever super place, I always say to the booker, you must book two nights and pay for them. Otherwise, you don't accept it. So I have an extra day to meet friends and see the shops. And that's where I get these things. And then I like fountain pens. So uh, at the beginning, I gave myself a different fountain pen for every book. But I stopped after the fifth because I can't use more than five fountain pens, really. So this, this has a lot. This is all about tricks. This is all just tricks. And for techniques, I had a uh, bind, you call these binders, you know, binders. Uh, this, this binder is just about controls. So I have about a dozen of these. So you can see here, there's thousands of notes just about controls, which I have in different categories, because this is something you need to start to do. Then you need a taxonomy. You know, you need to have a, uh, make an order system. Otherwise, when you have like 150 notes starting from there, you can't find yourself. So you have to have an order system. And then, uh, and you can use anything, you know, just to work, photocopying and thing and everything. And now here it's uh, everything says EN, which is Evernote. It means I've spent the past three years, whenever I had a little time in between, to transfer these to Evernote because, of course, it the electronic node now has a great advantage. You can speak into it. You can take a, a screenshot. You can go on a on a on a home page and and, uh, and and clip that. It's called clipper uh, function. You can have uh, put movies in it. You know, little movies. You can have. You can dictate it. You can have messages, audio messages in it. Uh, and above all, I can make when I make a study. I can take. Uh, Let's say I'm making a study on a top card glimpse, and which then a list of maybe 30 or 40 methods which I try to organize. Then I can go to the books and just uh, with the scanning app, just take a scan of two pages and put that in a PDF, never JPEG. Don't do JPEGs. JPEG is very bad because high resolution, a lot of memory. You can't really write into them very nicely. Make it always a PDF so you can take several pages into one and then you can put that into your note. I mean, as I say, it's a long talk and that's just a few, a few ideas. Anyway, what I'd like to say is that uh, to close that, it's very important to take notes. I mean, if you look, this is just supposed to be an interview, but of course it's much more. If you, you realize this is the, what we've talked already about here has at least 50 very practical ideas and concepts. You need to go through that if you're serious, go through this again. And each time you, uh, I say something which is of practical use, just hit the pause button and transcribe that into your notebook or into your app or whatever, because uh, tomorrow you will no longer uh, be able to remember it, you know. I don't believe in those motivational talks. It's bullshit in my personal opinion. Motivational talks you get out of being motivated, but then you don't know what to do. You need to have down to earth techniques, principles and strategies to use. That's what is useful, you know, uh, and uh, you have to find an example in your own reality that is a trick where you can apply it to. And then, and only then, will you be able to improve and to add something to what you already know. Sure. Yeah. Well, of course, transferring the notes to Evernote forced me to do that in great detail, you know, because I rewrote virtually almost everything Sometimes my, the notes are so good here that I just took a, a, a PDF, you know, just a scan, and I put them directly in. But most of them, like over 90%, I rewrote, you know, I rewrote. And if I have any references, I will f find the material in my library. I'm fortunate to have like 
over 3,500 books here in my library in 17 languages. So I have access to practically all uh, the information, uh, at least up to the 1990s. Now I stopped buying books because, you know, it's just uh, dilute. Every, every day you get a book. But, uh, but, so, but I can find that online, of course, in, um, in DBases. Yeah. Well, that's, a, that's again, it's another topic. <laughs> Yeah, well, let me let me show you for let's let's try to uh, share the screen if we can, so I can uh, show you. There we are. This is the this is the the cover. So it's called Sharing Secrets. That's a a story in itself. How to get the titles in in books. The subtitle tells uh, most of it. It says there's fifty two most important and practical strategies in magic. Uh, so in magic, try to be as brief as possible in that, but they have to say that to make it understandable. Uh, magic for me has three levels. There is the, the technical trick, a magic trick is a technical uh, level, the, 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 the mechanical part of a trick, how it works, you know, use a double lift here, a trick card there, the Gilbert principle there or whatever, or a, a twin uh, for a large illusion. That, that's the mechanical construction of the trick. The second level is the dramatic construction of the trick. So that's the whole mise-en-scene, the staging, the presentation. And the third one is, is the, the psychological construction. And that is all those principles what, that are invisible and that prevents the intelligent mind of the spectator from penetrating the secret. And this formal day, and this book is about these principles. Now, let me just give you a, a page here. Look, here is the core. The core of the book is made up of double pages. So it's 52 double pages. That's 104 pages. That's the, the core of the book. And each page, each double page has on the left a theoretical, a conceptual idea. Like here is the space information uh, continuum, which is explained on one page. If you can see my mouse here moving. So that's on the left side. Now to the left of the left are four, five or six boxes. Uh, first it says who conceived that technique. So it can be Di Vernon, Slidini, uh, Tamarez, Ascanio, uh, and other people are who came up with a with a uh, conceptual thought. They are listed here. When says when has it been published for the first time? But in this case, this is, is a, a concept of mine, uh, so it's published here uh, in this book. Then what is an additional thought that challenges you? Then with shows what other concepts described in the book go with it because of course no trick relies on just one concept it's just like a watch you know you have got a lot of elements that finally uh, show the time but here i'm focusing on one theory and i'm giving the others that match uh, here so you're gonna and then where on the the last box is usually where you can find more information now Oops. And on the other side, I'll get this, uh, on the other side, on the opposite side, is always a practical example. Huh? So that's uh, uh, in this, in most cases, it's a trick. So there are about 20 tricks in it. There can be techniques or presentations. And the again, the tricks, of course, uh, let me go back to the, to my, uh, so uh, you can look at me. Good. So, is it okay? Can we? You yes, see I me here? see you perfect. I'm back? Yes. Okay. So, yeah. So that's, of course, it's very important because any idea is only as good, I think, at least in magic, if you can find a way of using it like a technique. So these concepts, uh, are as practical as an Emslicar or a double lift. You can really apply them 
And to show how and where to apply them, I always give a trick or a technique. Now, the only thing you really need to do to, to instill that, because it's one thing to understand the concept, it's another thing to make that concept your own so you can, from now on, apply it with every trick you're doing. In order to do that, you have to uh, understand what the concept is about and now take a trick of yours and apply it there. The moment you apply it there, you instill it as a skill. It's like you've learned the language at the moment. And from now on, you can speak that for the rest of your life. That's quite incredible. And I think that there are very few books uh, who treat that subject. And above all, what I've tried to do is to treat it on a very a practical level. So this is not just an intellectual play. It is something you can really uh, take and immediately transform and really apply as if it was a, a technique or, or, or a slight, really. Yeah. So that, that's the idea. And of course, there are other essays, there are lists in it, but the whole book treats about that. But it's, uh, yeah, and it's, uh, I don't know when this is going to air, but uh, uh, it's, it, it's out the book by end of May 2021. And uh, I, I hope uh, you will like it. Mm -hmm.